John Jones. This news just came in that John Jones passed his USADA blood test the night of the fight. So he failed the one the day before with just urine, but the blood test that he took right after the fight, the day of, he passed. So it doesn't make real, really doesn't make sense. And the plot thickens. Oh. My thing is with this that in that that gentleman who sent me the stuff on the on the steroid and how it, it you know it has an hour how half life or whatever it is it's only detectable for hours. No, the thing the truth is, it, and whoever you listen to, no one really knows mm-hmm. unless you're an expert in this. And it sounds like even the experts are a little like, what the hell's going on right now? Yeah, it's all hearsay. So the gentleman who sent me that stuff, I think it's really good. He knows what he's talking about. Um, does that narrative work for this? And these are all – that's not my own doing. That That's not my own – those aren't my own words or research. So I don't want to – I'm not taking credit for any of that. But it, you can paint whatever narrative you want here. John is a terrible person. John, uh, you know, he he's reckless. John is um, – Obviously on steroids, John, just once again, people are trying to fuck him or, you know, that you can paint whatever near right now you can't because we don't know what's going to come out. So homeboy, uh, what is this, Jim? What are we looking at right here? So this is the Andy Foster, who's the head of the CSAC, California State Athletic Commission. He says himself that he doesn't, it doesn't make sense to him, like how he's failing on the, the, the weigh in test. But then he passed the two tests early in July, and then now he's he passed the test right after the fight. So he just writes this whole thing. But this in. is what I don't. So this is what uh, Foster said, who's like the main guy here. He says this entire situation doesn't make any sense to me. It just doesn't. If you're doing a steroid panel, then this drug is going to show up every single time. The fact that it didn't show up on July six and seven when he was tested before that's indication that he was not on that drug at the time. At that point, one of two things is probably going on here. And this is the biggest takeaway from this. This is what should be highlighted. So at that point, one of two things is probably going on here. He's either extremely careless or he's a cheater. Both those things are not good. There's, no, there's nothing positive there. I know he's already been extremely careless once in his career, but none of this makes any sense. That's why I think it's very important that we vet this and look at all the available evidence before we jump to conclusions and hang this guy out to dry. Well, he says uh, we need to look at all the available evidence before we jump to conclusions and hang this guy out to dry. Scroll up, and then he says uh, he's either extremely careless or he's a cheater. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you kind of hang him out to dry a little bit there, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, Jones is still entitled to due process and likely won't have the results of his B sample until later this month, which is expected to be followed by another formal hearing. Until then, all we can do is wait. Ah, I just, listen, if Foster says he's baffled and doesn't know what's going on, no one does. Mm -hmm. This guy is in the know. I think it's fair to say something's going on here. Yeah. Like something is going on with John. You don't fail three out of four USADA tests, and now was this f- four out of five? I don't know. So you fail four out of five now, and it's like fuck, man. There, but that th- thing you said earlier, it that kind of makes way more sense to me. That half life of that drug, if that's if that's real, that would make more sense to me. You want me to go over that again? <laughs> if you want to. B said it's out of your system in an hour, right? That's what he said. Oh, man. Where's homeboy's email? Hold, please. Mm-hmm. Do, 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 do. I got to clean up my emails, man. Do you get come downs from steroids? Or is there some steroids I'll give you like a come down after? I've never taken a steroid. Right. I wish I did. All right. Um, <laughs> here it is. And again, I don't want to give this guy's name and I'll tell you who he is. Just for obvious reasons, but let's go through this one more time. Again, this is, these are not my words. This is what was sent to me and mm-hmm. makes the most sense in the narrative of the John Jones drug story right now. The smart individual says, John Jones wasn't trying to take Ball. John has been hanging around powerlifters for a few training camps. 
a notorious, all capitals, a notorious drug in powerlifting is called myobolarone. It's the drug that is rumored to have driven Mike Tyson to orally borrow some of Evander Holyfield's air. That's his attempt at comedy. Okay. <laughs> Why do people take it? It's very difficult to test for MIB. That's that uh, MIB. So mib alone, mib alone. Mm-hmm. Anyways, MIB on the streets. If yeah. you're looking for it, just refer to it as MIB before you get beat up. It's very difficult to test for MIB. It's a half-life is measured in hours. It's out of the body extremely fast, all capitals once again. The metabolites are even more difficult to test for afterwards. Most other drugs are detectable for months. It's a drug that is taken in milligrams. It's taken in micrograms. So that's how – so the reason why this makes sense because that's how A-Rod and a lot of the baseball players are getting away with things. They would chew those gummy beers or certain things during the game, and by the end of the game, they were free. But during the game, no one gets tested during the fight or during the game. Yeah. They, so you microdose. So it's in and out, in and out. So it doesn't stick around. So the levels in the system are extremely small. It requires a very sensitive test. Often a dose of 200 MCGs is too much for some lifters to handle. Problem with MIB, it's impossible to find the real drug. See, this is the key here. It's impossible to find the real drug, but you can easily buy it. Uh, what is purpose? Uh, you can easily buy it uh, for like what it should be used for yeah. with underground powerlifters. But it's usually Winstrol, Dianabol, Turnabol, or Androl. Fires that take real MIB never get caught. Lifters that use real M- MIB never get caught. Guys that get a bad supplier always get caught. Mm-hmm. MIB isn't a build-up drug. One dose will increase strength immensely, and it's followed by an unbelievable increase in aggression within 20 to 30 minutes of taking it. That drug profile fits the narrative and timeline of a failed test. If you follow John's training camp logic, in quotes, why take a build-up uh, drug before the contest, end quote. It is very sensible to believe them, but for those of us who know and personally use MIB, we know he was looking to kill DC and just got a bad supply. MIB isn't a drug that John could get legally despite his resources. I don't care who you are. It is almost exclusively obtained on the black market. It's a risk all fighters and some lifters take, although most lifters do the slightly more ethical thing and compete in untested federations with other untested athletes. Food for thought. His name. <laughs> I thought you were going to say something. His name, Brian Callen. <laughs> His name, Joe Rogan. Just kidding. Uh, crazy though, right? Yeah. I mean, that's just someone saying it, but I mean, it does make more sense. It's, it, again, it's a legit guy, but you know, it, it, to the narrative, it makes sense. But again, this could be complete bullshit. Yeah. Anything if could be. Foster doesn't know. We don't know. What we do know, what we do know is where there's smoke, there's fire. We know his past. We know his history. Like if, and this is going to be a horrible reach, but bear with me here. If someone said, um, pick anyone. Oh, Lindsay Lohan was out last night getting drunk again. I don't bat an eye. That's what the, we've, she's done it before. That's what the fuck she does. Uh, Bill Cosby got caught raping another girl at 70, looking like a burnt turtle. Ah, that's what he does. He rapes girls. Like it's, 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 there's an MO here. You know, and what one thing we know we can depend on John Jones is is to be the best fighter in the world, fuck up, and be surrounded by controversy. That's what he's very reliable on. We know that. And he failed the day before with urine and passed the day after with blood. Like, so what the strange. Hell? Yeah. How cool would it be if John just was like, "All right, here's what happened." <laughs> That'd be. Awesome. Have you ever had any athlete do that? No, no. Chael? Didn't Chael After, said something. Afterwards, yeah. Who was telling me about Chael's last podcast? Is there an article on it? Can you, is there an article on what Chael said Are, on his? You talking about what John, John Jones running away from a test or something else? Did did uh, Chael comment on that? Because uh, according to Chael and his sources, he was saying that when they – remember when they are surprising people, mm-hmm. he was saying that um, – so if they caught Jones with Turnabal, they missed the good stuff? Is that what you're talking about? Let's see what this says here. Chael Sonnen recently spoke about John Jones' third drug test failure. Okay, so this is his third. I messed up. I said four out of five. So this would be three out of 
His sec, uh, his third drug test failure. His second during the U.S. USADA era. As a person who has been caught in the midst to have thoroughly used PEDs, no shit. He gave yeah. some interesting insights about his former opponent's positive tests. He makes the dis- distinction that Tyranobol is an illegal substance and not just one that is banned for competition, and that there wouldn't be much legitimate explanations on why it's found in someone's system. Quote, jail here. As uh, as far as Toronto Ball, you have to go to a museum to find that. That's not something that a person would take, someone said on MMA Hour. On the list of performance enhancers, it's probably number eight on that list. You might be thinking, eight? That's pretty good. Well, there's only about ten substances on that list. According to Sonnen, if they caught Jones with Toronto Ball, you, you saw them must have likely missed other substances he was taking along with it. To take that, you would traditionally take that in a stack, he explains. I don't know what John did. I'm speculating off what I've done. If they catch something like that, they miss the good stuff. So, yeah, he's got to deal with this. There's no contaminated substance. This stuff is pretty hard to get. It's pretty expensive if you do get it. Much of what Sonnen said in line with uh, Ian Kidd's very thorough explanation on the drug here on BE new testing was also recently new testing this is a key here yep. new testing was also recently rolled out on WADA accredited labs that can detect the use of Tyranobol weeks or months after it was taken mm-hmm. from m- what my people tell me around the MMA community that's the biggest issue is the new test yeah. you're using and guys are like oh fuck and obviously that we're doing a new test, everybody, so brace yourselves. They just fucking spring on you. That's how you find out they have a new one. So according to Sony, if he believes it won't happen, Joe should probably just come clean. I found that commissions in public, the quicker you come clean, the better. That's one guy's opinion, but it's mine. Jones is never going to do that in a million years. I agree with Sona on this part. He's going to lie in his inner circle. He's going to take it to the grave. A lot of times that will come back to bite you. If he did a dishonest, a- dishonest act, act, sometimes the most honest thing you can do is say, yeah, you got me. All I can tell you is that I had a higher juice contract than Tropicana, and he pushed me around like a Mack truck. Versus Volvo. I think for the better part of his career, that seems to be how it works. Interesting. Yeah, man. They, everyone always says he's like a superhuman strength. Everything. So. Again, yeah. no no one really knows. I, I So what we do know is Toronto Ball is so old school. And I agree with Che on this point. If you're taking that, you know, that's like, that's like going from a fucking Civic Regular Civic, hey, man. I know, like the new <laughs> bullshit ones. Not okay. your cool uh, yeah, rice rocket, roll cage. but that's like going from a regular Civic EX and then just buying a Bugatti. Mm. You, there's a middle ground there. Like Toronto Ball is so old school. It, it's so old school. That's like jumping in a, a '64 Ferrari Daytona. You're like fuck, Jesus, man. Like what? Where? How do we get to that point? There's usually, like, if you're taking that, you, you're going to be experiencing other things. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Again, I just I'm off the Jones train, man. I've, yeah, I've defended him. I've been the biggest fan. You know, I, I I realize he's dark, and I actually dig that. I think the UFC could use him, but um, yeah, this to sucks. get caught with something like this, Chael's right. There's usually you're stacking with something else, and he's right. They missed the good stuff, and how I don't know, I don't know. But when you make the type of money he does, and when you have the type of fame he does, you're gonna get. Uh, good people that come out of the woodworks, and then you get the darkness that comes out of the woodworks. And that darkness can come with some interesting stuff that get, might help your career, but eventually it's going to catch up with you. That makes sense. Yeah. It's so interesting, though. We straight up live, like MMA, I, who I was talking to, oh, I was talking about uh, Sean Shelby about this. MMA, we live in this straight up real soap opera for men. You know, it's just like this crazy soap opera. And there's always. Always something. Like I was talking to the Showtime guys, like, what, you do a podcast just on fighting once a week? I'm like, oh, yeah, you could do it twice a week if you wanted to. Really? I'm like, yeah, there's always something, man. Always, always something. 